open the word of the Lord. I invite those who can to open the word of the Lord in the book of Luke. Luke 19. We're going to read from verse 29. Gospel Luke, chapter 19, from verse 29. Amen. Thus says the word of the Lord. And it came to pass when he drew near to Beth Bethje and Bethany at the mountain called Olive Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opp opposite you, where as you enter you will find a cold tide on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if any as you, why are you loosening, loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it, just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the coat, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the coat? And they said, The Lord has need of, of, it, of, his, of him. Then they brought in him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes clothes on the coat. Now, verse 38, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace on heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisee, Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, re rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name. Glorify you for everything that you have already done for our lives, for the service, for the privilege of being in your presence, Lord. You have called us to raise, praise your name. We are saying, blessed be your name at this moment, Lord. And we also as that your word may speak to our hearts and give us a blessing that we need, Lord. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the word says that, as we just read, that Jesus, he was there near the mountain of Olives, and there he looks to the city of Jerusalem. And uh, later on, we'll find out that Jesus even cries for the city. But it is interesting that there Jesus sees the true situation of Israel. A religious people, a people that looking from the ones who, that looked from outside, the other peoples, even because they knew the, the history of Israel up to this point. They knew that they had a God, that they believed in a God. But Jesus sees the true situation of the people, a people that had already forgotten the Lord, a people that uh, didn't have God as their God. They use the temple as, as a commerce that for, ma for many years was, was holy, was a blessing for the people of Israel. Now was nothing more than a, a place, a place where they have own, their own selfish interests, where profit was what was the most important. And why do we say that? Because in the same way that Jesus looked to Jerusalem, he looked to the people of Israel, Jesus also looked our days to this world, a world that called itself Christian, a world that call themselves, that they say that they have a God, they believe in a God, 
a Christian God, uh, Christian people that have had experiences like the Jewish people had in the past, but God see the true situation of man, a man that no longer has God as their main source of life. And Jesus here, he says, look, he sent two of his disciples and said, go, you find a young donkey, it's tied up, and loose it. And if somebody comes to ask anything, then you answer. The Lord knows what he's going to do. That's what, uh, that was the word of the Lord for the disciples. And that's what they did. And it's interesting that the little donkey was there tied up. So that was, it was not being used for anything at that moment. But when the disciples arrived there, the ones that felt like they were owners of the little donkey, they said, hey, wait a minute, why are you going to lose it? Even though the donkey was not being used for anything at the moment. My brother, in no moment, we are now comparing human beings with a donkey. That's not the point here. That's not our intention here. But the donkey, this young donkey here, is animal. It's an animal that is despised. Many look at it and, and they think, oh, this animal has only one purpose, to carry load. It's an animal that may not have the beauty of a large horse. It's an animal that may be despised. But my brethren, that's how man's life is. That's how we were one day in this world. No one looked to us. You were despised. You, youth, you just another youth. There are so many youths outside, out there, more successful in their professional lives, in their sentimental life, in their school, maybe even in their homes, where apparently everything looks to be perfect. Homes out, out there, they apparently they seem to be perfect. The father, the mother, the children. But man is despised, is rejected, and we as men in this world, we're just a statistic. But my brethren, we didn't come here to speak only about this. The word of the Lord for us tonight is that you may be despised and rejected in the world, but Jesus looked to you, he from the height of his glory, he looked to you and he said, lose that one there. Maybe we didn't have any worth in the world. And the ones that felt like they were owners of our lives, they may have, they would have asked, why are you loosen, loosening it? Oh, why are we untying this one? Because it, it, that one is, has no purpose, worthless. But we, we have been delivered because we glorify, now we glorify the name of the Lord. God brought us here tonight to say, Blessed be the, the King who comes in the name of the Lord. My brethren, our purpose is to carry Jesus, not because Jesus needs, because Jesus says, bring the young donkey here. And when the young donkey arrived, Jesus sat down over the young donkey. And when Jesus enters into the city, no one looked to the donkey. They only looked to Jesus. And they pointed out and said, that one is Jesus, son of David. And my brethren, we are here tonight. And the world do not look to us. But it doesn't matter to us. Because my brethren, we are here to serve our God. We are here because the Lord is the one that shows up in our lives. When we go through a location, nobody looked to us, but what they see in us is a living Jesus, a glorified Jesus, a Jesus that has sustained and transformed our lives. When they look to us, when they look to our lives, they don't see in us what we once were. Because the song that we sing says the following, in, when I, I walked in the 
slaved in the world. I was a slave to the world, but Jesus delivered me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And my brethren, we are here tonight to say this. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. My brethren, the Pharisees of our time, the world out there, they will say, hey, be quiet. Why are you speaking? Why who you are crying out to? And our answer is, we plead, you cry out to our living God. We cry out to a God that answers our prayers. We cry out to a God that brought to us every year and we brought us here tonight is because of the mercy of this God. He is our God. It is not just any God. He is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Many call themselves themselves kings. They call themselves kings on many things. But the king that comes in the name of the Lord, there is only one, Jesus Christ. And my brethren, there's no, there's no way if somebody uh, grows silent, the stones are going to s shout out. And in my faith, I am sure that if we be silenced, uh, the stones are going to speak and because our God is a, the God that can do all things. And my brethren, we are coming to the end of another year. Each person have gone through their own trials and problems. Many still have problems and difficulties that they may be growing through. Maybe apparently they have no answers. But what, what we have in our hearts is a praise and a gratitude to our God. Because God delivers us from a captivity, we have been tied up, despised, and today we have war through our God. The world doesn't matter to us. If the world continued despising us, the youth, the children, the adolescent, it doesn't matter. What matters to us is that we have war through our God. And that's what matters to us. And we're here to glorify the God for, glorify God for the trial that you may be going through because you know that in the trial that you may be going through, your God, your Lord, will answer you in the appropriate moment. The victory will come. And we will glorify the Lord. We will praise the name of the Lord with song and with gratitude in our hearts. We are going to say, Blessed be the King that comes in the name of the Lord. We are going to praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
bendito é o nome do Senhor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The church praising the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glória a Jesus. Brother, there is a text in Acts that says the following. Acts 4.20. It says the following. Because we, we cannot stop speaking about what we have heard and seen. My brethren, there is no way for us to be silenced. The trials are many, the difficulties are great, but our, great, but our God is greater. And there's no way for us to be silenced because our God is our God of victories. Amen. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Amen. Lord, there's no way for us to be silenced, Lord, for the great way in which you have taken care of us, Lord. We're thankful for your love, for your salvation. We're thankful because you rescued us and brought us to your salvation. Blessed be your name. For your blessing has been poured out upon our church. For the arrival of the Lord Jesus is soon to take his church in the name of Jesus. Peace to the Lord, my brethren. The Lord has shown tonight. There's a person that came and received a blessing. Throughout the during the service, a blessing of deliverance. The brothers spoke about not making any comparison. The donkey that was delivered there, and the one who freed it up was the Lord. And the word of the Lord says that if the Son delivered you, you should be truly free. The Lord gave a blessing of deliverance, a blessing of deliverance to a man who is here tonight. Why? Because he, he, why did he achieve this blessing of deliverance? Because he made a choice, and the choice to come to the house of the Lord. It's to come to the house of the Lord. The Lord sent an angel to his house to undo a trap, a snare from the enemy that was prepared for him. And we have seen this Many times in the service of the women, the Lord gave a spiritual gift that we spoke about this while the sisters were praying here. The angels were sent to deliver their, them in their homes. And this is yet another reason that we have here, we have the sisters praying for our lives. That was uh, supper this afternoon, uh, this uh, last evening, and it was a great blessing, reason for us to glorify the Lord. The Lord also has shown another woman, a sister. And the Lord showed that this woman, she has not given the proper worth to the project and the plan of God for her life. She has neglected it. We need to have this, this special care, give appropriate worth to the presence of the Lord in our lives. The Bible says that first, the kingdom of God and His justice. First, we need to, the project, the plan, the salvation of Christ Jesus and everything else will be added on to you. Amen. We cannot live off of appearances. We need to live the plan, the project of God, the genuine plan of God in our lives, which is Christ Jesus in our hearts. Amen. We're going to stand up at this moment. Eternal Father, we want to praise you and glorify you and thank you for this moment in which we have enjoyed peace, fellowship, and we glorify the Lord for the deliverances that we have given us every day, for your grace, for your, because you have looked to our lives and rescued us, guided us to your presence. Blessed be your holy name, Lord, for the alerts. We want to praise you, Lord and raise your name high up because you have helped us, you have rescued us, and you have sustained us in your presence, Lord. Blessed be your name because of all these things, and that's why, Lord, we plead, Lord, receive our service and adoration into your throne of grace as a sweet uh, smell 
to you. That's what we're doing in the name of Jesus. You know, let me say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We would like to remind the brethren that tomorrow will be our last Sunday school of the year. It's going to be at 10.30 in the morning. Oh, we're all invited to participate. And at night, at 7.30, we're going to have a, yet another service of glorification of the Lord. And on Tuesday, we are not going to have the service, normal service at 8 p.m. Our service will begin at 10.30 p.m. The service of vigil for the new year. We are going to take advantage of this opportunity to invite our brethren and friends and co-workers to participate in this moment so important in our church with us to pass a new year in the presence of the Lord and begin the new year in the right way in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You, my brother and sister, you are our guest. If you need a prayer, a clarification about the gifts that was that were delivered, the word that was applied, raise your voice or your hand so that we may identify you and we'll give you the appropriate assistance.